Hello and welcome to this video. Now in this one we're looking at different types of chemical reactions. Let's get started straight away. Now the first reaction we're looking at is what we call electrolysis of water. Now here's a very simple diagram showing that this will set up the at home. You can see there's actually two pencils. The key thing about here is the graphite. The graphite is electrodes and it says here this is a decomposition of water into oxygen and hydrogen gases. Each molecule of water, it says here, contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So what's actually happening in this experiment is at the cathode, get the cathode, that's a negative electrode, we've got two hydrogen ions are being attracted towards the negative electrode. There they are uh, gaining two electrons to produce hydrogen gas, H2. Now the water splits up into hydrogen, which is positive ion, and hydroxide ion, the negative. You can see there you've got two hydrogens and oxygen. And the anode, these hydroxide ions are attracted towards the positive anode, and here they give up four electrons. There's four electrons there to be given up to produce two molecules of water and oxygen, and there's your four electrons. Okay, let's actually see this in action. If we connect an electrolyzer filled with distilled water to a source of direct current, we can observe a slow evolution of gases. After some time, we notice that the volume of the gas released at the cathode is double that of the gas formed at the anode. To identify the gaseous products of the reaction, we collect each gas in a test tube and check its behavior in the presence of a glowing splint. The characteristic cracking sound proves that the gas released at the cathode is hydrogen. The ignition of the glowing splint is evidence that the gas collected from the anode is oxygen, which supports combustion. Now the first type of, what, of a reaction was electrolysis. The second type we're looking at here is what's known as a precipitation reaction. Now when clear yellow potassium chromate, so it's clear and yellow, is added to test tube telling clear colourless. Now make sure you understand the difference between clear and colourless concentrated lead nitrate solution. A brilliant yellow precipitate of lead chromate is formed. And we can see it being formed here. So here's the equation. Lead nitrate plus potassium chromate gives us lead chromate which is look the solid there tells us a precipitate and aqueous solution of potassium nitrate okay let's look at this in action now here we've got the setup here's our colorless lead nitrate solution being put here into a boiling tube okay so there's our lead nitrate And see here, here's our potassium chromate. It's yellow, clear solution. So add those two together, and look, we're going to get the second. There we go. Now straight away, you can see the formation here of this precipitate. Okay, precipitate of lead chromate is being formed here by the addition of our two solutions. Now our third type of reaction is one in which an oxidation reaction is occurring. This is the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium burns and oxygen is oxidized to form magnesium oxide. So a brilliant white reaction. We see this moment in the video. Now magnesium ions, which are Mg2 plus, are formed through a lot of two electrons. And these electrons are transferred to oxygen, which means oxygen forms the oxide ion O2 minus. And here's the equation 2Mg plus O2 gives 2MgO, which is magnesium oxide. Let's look now at the reaction in place. Let's take a look at the reaction of magnesium with pure oxygen. To begin with I'll ignite the magnesium in air. Air is one-fifth oxygen. 
It shouldn't surprise us that when I then lower it into a gas jar of pure oxygen, the reaction will become more vigorous. If I was showing you this reaction live, then I would be warning you to turn your head, head sideways on to look at the flame indirectly because it is very bright and it can do permanent damage to the retina of your eyes. So here we go. We ignite it in air. And now I lower it into the jar. And you should notice that it burns even brighter in pure oxygen. It's producing a white smoke here, which is magnesium oxide. That will settle to form a white powder. And I can test the pH of the resulting oxide. And here I've collected some of the oxide on a watch glass. I've placed some damp universal indicator paper in contact with the white powder. And I see it turning from that golden yellow color to a greeny blue color, indicating that magnesium oxide is very weakly alkaline. Magnesium oxide is only sparingly soluble in water and it dissolves slightly then to form a weakly alkaline solution. Now our last sort of reaction we call a displacement reaction and here we've got zinc and copper sulfate. So when zinc is placed into copper sulfate solution what we call a displacement reaction occurs producing zinc sulfate and copper. Now the reason behind this is zinc, remember your reactivity series? Zinc is above copper in reactivity series so it displaces it from a solution of the salt. Because zinc is more reactive the zinc will displace the copper to left the zinc sulfate and copper. So this is an example of a displacement reaction. Let's look at the video now of this in practice. Let's take a look at the displacement reaction where zinc metal displaces copper from its compound copper sulfate. Here's the location of zinc in the reactivity series and copper. Zinc is considerably more reactive than copper and it can displace it from its compound. Copper will be displaced that blue solution of copper sulfate will change to form a colourless clear solution of zinc sulfate. Zinc sulfate, when dissolved in water, forms a colourless clear solution. And copper will be produced. Let's take a look at this reaction. Here we have the starting materials. A solution, a blue solution of copper sulfate and shiny grey zinc foil. This reaction will happen quickly. Watch how the shiny grey surface immediately blackens as we drop it into the copper sulphate. Ready, steady, go. And there you can see the surface darkening. This is one I produced a little earlier. And you can see here a black deposit has formed on the surface. And after some time if you look on the right here, you'll see you may make out that the colour of the copper sulphate begins to fade from blue and it will eventually form a colourless clear solution of zinc sulphate. Okay, so that's the end of this series of videos looking at types of chemical reactions. Just to summarise, we've looked at first of all looked at electrolysis in electrolysis water. Then we looked at a um, precipitation reaction between lead nitrate and potassium chromate, and an oxidation reaction where magnesium is burned in oxygen, and lastly a displacement reaction where zinc displaces copper from copper sulfate. Okay, well I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and goodbye for now.